tonight, help for people who are jobless, especially for the thousands who are now considered eligible for unemployment assistance. Just a couple hours ago, the state opened up the online gates using federal stimulus funding and new qualifications for who can apply. King 5's Chris Daniels has the story. Mr. Daniels? Yes. You're so, that's so formal. I'm just a guy named Chris. <laughs> that's the way we were raised. That's Sherry with a difficult to pronounce last name. Nicolopoulos. Everyone knows me as Nick. Okay. AKA Nick for Nick's Barbershop. She's at ease tonight talking about a painful past 42 days with how social distancing mandates forced the closure of her Muckleteo shop. And as a sole proprietor, it gave her no prospects to collect unemployment. Mr. Daniels, it's tough. We're a small business and I am a people person. My job as a people person, I'm a people person. I love to hug, I love to be social and talk with people. And you know, when you're cutting hair, it is a touchy job. And it's been really hard because it's my only source of income. That changes tonight. Eligibility will open up for a whole new number of individuals who don't typically qualify for traditional unemployment insurance. Nick Damaris with Washington's Employment Security Department says the Federal CARES Act is now allowing for payments to people who classify as independent contractors. The state's website was offline for most of the day to prepare for a wave of requests tonight. The tsunami of new applications. We anticipate that we are going to you know, have hundreds of thousands of Washingtonians be able to access these benefits. In addition, the department has hired hundreds of people for a call center to handle requests. We're sorry. We are experiencing an extremely high volume of calls. He acknowledges the system has been overwhelmed with 585,000 claims this past week. We've been looking at it every day, waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Nick says she was among the first in the digital line that she hopes leads to another path. Hopefully slowly get back to normal, just to be able to open our doors and just to get back to some kind of normalcy. In Seattle, Chris Daniels, King 5 News. Meanwhile, coronavirus deaths continue to rise nationwide. More than 34,000 people have died from the virus in the last seven weeks. There are more than 717,000 confirmed cases in the U.S. What about here in Washington state? Well, today the state health department reported another 21 coronavirus deaths, bringing the state's death toll up to 624. More than half the deaths happened in patients over 80 years old. There are more than 11,800 confirmed infections. And of all the people tested for coronavirus in our state, more than 91% tested negative. Today, Seattle's mayor shared encouraging news about the efforts here to slow the spread of the virus. We believe that we have flattened the curve, we're on the way down, but we know we have to keep this in place for still a significant period of time. And at the same time, how do we open up? Mayor Jenny Durkin talked about keeping efforts in place. She mentioned how the city had to close parks last weekend to prevent people from gathering together. We are still exercising that dial to make sure that we don't lose all of the gains that we've made because people have sacrificed so much to get to where we are. And I think that, that when people hear that and think about it in those terms, they're willing to keep doing the hard things. Mayor Durkin spoke during the annual Clinton Global Initiative. The meeting took place, as you can see, online. According to a recent Pew Research poll, two-thirds of Americans are worried that state governments may lift restrictions on public activity too quickly. And the rest don't think they're being lifted quickly enough. That sentiment was on display in protests from San Diego, California to Annapolis, Maryland today. Listen to one protester in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We're not going to have a vaccine for at least 18 months. We cannot shut down our state for 18 months. The demonstration happened as President Trump urges followers to, quote, liberate Minnesota, Michigan and Virginia. Washington's governor says the president is encouraging illegal and dangerous acts. This is just grossly irresponsible, and it is uh, dangerously uh, bombastic because it inspires people to do dangerous things. Well, protest is being planned in Olympia for tomorrow. Public health experts say social distancing and other restrictions are working to slow the spread of the coronavirus, and that doing so prevents hospitals from becoming overwhelmed. 
Local farmers markets say they found a way to keep operating while still following social distancing guidelines during the pandemic. The University District Farmers Market reopened today. Our Kayla Lafferty explains how the markets have now adapted. And you guys are all set. All right, man. Thank you. And we've been direct market in Seattle for 20 years. We're here every single week. That is until about a month ago. The U District Farmers Market and most others in the state shut down due to the coronavirus pandemic. I, I was going through in my mind what is possibly wrong with farmers markets. And I couldn't really come up with any. Jennifer Antos, the executive director of the Neighborhood Farmers Market Alliance, worked with public health officials and city leaders to create a safe plan to reopen. So what are you guys doing to ensure that people are going about this in a safe way? Yeah, that's a great question. Thank you for asking because everything that we've done to modify the market has been through a health and safety lens. There are really no more than uh, 62 shoppers allowed in the market at any time. They've also cut the number of vendors in half, set up hand washing stations, and are asking shoppers to limit their time in the market. Trying to figure out how the limited amount of traffic flow is going to work for the vendors. Thank you. Kurt Tonemaker says a big portion of his farm's income is from farmers markets. Do you think that you guys are going to be able to make up the lack in, in income that you've had over the last two months? Um, no, that money is gone. We're going to have to figure out alternative ways to sell things. Vendors at this market argue this is a safer and more sustainable way to shop when people need to stay distant. Here, I'm hoping that um, we can really kind of turn the corner and show that really this is a super safe environment for, for people to shop. People have realized that, that we are as much essential food source as a grocery store or anyone else out there. And this is actually outside environment is a much safer environment to shop in. Also reopening this weekend is the Ballard Farmers Market. Tomorrow they'll be open with a new drive through format. They encourage people to order online and then drive to the market to pick it up to help with social distancing. In the U District, Kayla Lafferty, King 5 News. The coronavirus has hit New York harder than any other state. There have been more than 13,000 deaths among 236,000 cases. With hospitals running out of resources and healthcare workers running on overtime, one nurse from here in Seattle is going there to try and make a difference. King 5's Amy Marino has this story. They've always been heroes who walk amongst us, but there's no doubt the coronavirus pandemic has cast new light on those who work in healthcare. Obviously there is fear involved, but as a nurse, you sign up for a lot of this stuff. Nurse Samantha Schulte works for Neighbor Care and has been part of their testing and working with patients since the outbreak started. And I was like one of the first to be like, put me in. I want to do that. So I've been around uh, definitely, you know, the the COVID population. But a recent call from an old nursing school friend changed everything for her. She did her training in New York. He was experiencing things he's never experienced before. He's a firefighter as well in New York, and he said he hasn't had a day off in a month and a half. She knew that she had to go, and her boss has agreed. She's now headed to New Rochelle, New York, to care for patients in a COVID ICU unit. The more I can do and the more active I am, uh, the more I feel passionate about what I'm what I'm up to um, as a nurse. She takes along her grandfather's stethoscope and the love and support of her friends and family. Her dad is a wildland firefighter who has never shied away from running towards danger to help others. So I, I really feel like he's instilled a lot of that strength in me. Um, so knowing that I have their support and their love makes it even, you know, makes it easier. As she bravely heads off for the known and unknown, she is quick to push away the spotlight saying, her story is not unique. I am not the only one doing this. Um, there is a Facebook wall flooded with nurses who are asking, where can I go to help? Amy Marino, King 5 News. Boeing today is joining the nationwide battle against the virus. The company today says it completed a transport trip from China to the United States. More than 540,000 face masks were delivered during that trip. This is video that they shared with us today. Boeing is just one of several other U.S. companies that are using its resources to help curb the spread of the virus.